Saskatoon through the lens of Helen Schrader. Helen Schrader made a unique contribution to the photographic history of Saskatoon, providing us with a fascinating and refreshing view of life in the early days of the city. Her intimate photographs are a valuable counterpoint to the professionally posed portraits and street scenes of the predominantly male photographers of the time. In documenting the significant as well as the everyday events of her growing family, Mrs. Schrader has given us a charming view of what it was like to live in Saskatoon. The family home at 321 Sixth Avenue North provides the focus for her images, but it does not restrict them. In the background, we see the city growing and developing. When built, the house on Sixth Avenue was at the city limits. Over the decades as her family grew up, it was from this vantage point that Mrs. Schrader watched as the city expanded around her. Although the primary focus of this show is people, this does not mean Helen Schrader limited for her photography to family portraits. The construction of the Besbro Hotel, scenes of the exhibition, photographs of early Dukabor settlements, and pictures of early aviation provide the subject for other Schrader photographs in the local history room. The wide range of subject matter is testimony to a lively curiosity at work. This curiosity has its roots in Helen Schrader's childhood in Minnesota. She was born to a wealthy family on 4 November 1881 in Red Wing, Minnesota. Her father was Edward T. Mallory, a superintendent with the Red Wing Union Stoneware Company. Her mother, Leonora Vetter Mallory. The family traced its roots back to Sir Thomas Mallory, author of the medieval Arthurian romance Le Mort d'Arzu. Helen was well educated, graduating with a Master of Arts degree from the University of Minnesota. It was at this time that she began to take photographs with a retractable Kodak camera. Marriage to Udo Schrader and the move to Saskatoon did not stop her photography. Isolated and lonely, Helen Schrader's initial impulse to photography was motivated by a desire to document for family and friends her life in this new land. A lively imagination and an artistic eye helped to distinguish these photographs from the typical family snapshots of the time. To the social historian of early Saskatoon, they provide an invaluable record. A languid self-portrait of Helen Schrader leaning against a tree on a summer day, taken circa 1910. Such moments of repose were less frequent as Helen Schrader coped with the demands of keeping a household and of raising five children, a task made more difficult with the death of her husband in 1918. The Schrader House at 321 Sixth Avenue North. Udo Schrader and daughter Leonora sit on the front steps. Built in 1912, the house is front gabled with a side dormer. The porch roof, which is supported by four sets of triple columns, has balustrade along the top. A proud Leonora Mallory Schrader models her drop-waisted party frock in the front yard of 321 Sixth Avenue North in about 1910. Behind her is the home of Dr. William Bulmer, an early real estate dealer and prominent dentist. Two of the Schrader girls, Leonora in front and Ilsa on horseback, posed with their Shetland ponies in the yard on 6th Avenue North, about 1919. Behind the house was a barn with a stall for the horses and a hayloft on top. Although the Schraders spent winters in the city, they spent much of the summer at their farm near Borden. This 1915 harvest scene shows the Schrader sisters Leonora, Betty, and Ilsa with their father Udo and the family dog Bessie, posing in front of a threshing machine blowing straw and a horse-drawn hayrick. A birthday party and a chance to dress up in your fanciest frock and your finest hair ribbon. Leonora and her sister Betty are towards the right in this party photo. The sad-looking boy in the hat is Arthur Salter, his mother always made him wear a hat.
Two friends pose amid blooming petunias and climbing nasturtiums at a lake in the summer of 1914. The extravagant bows were typical adornments for children at the time. A summer picnic by the roadside in about 1920. The dark-haired woman on the left is Verna Murphy, a new neighbor to the Schraders and the subject of several photographs. The blonde-haired child standing is Kent Murphy, and his older brother Edward is tucked behind the woman seated at the right. The other family may be the doctor and Mrs. Arthur Salter and their son. Dr. Salter was an early Saskatoon dentist. Two period cars are visible at the edges of the image. Ice cream soda, lemonade tart, tell me the name of your sweetheart. A skipping song sung by countless schoolgirls and perhaps by Leonora Schrader in this circa 1917 photograph. Behind her, at 324 Sixth Avenue North, is the Riviera apartment block built in 1912 to 1913 by Frederick A. Blaine and called the Blaine Block until 1915. These elaborately hatted ladies strike a theatrical pose, dressed in overcoats and feathered hats, sometime between 1915 and 1920. The occasion may have been a costume party or perhaps a private joke. The woman on the left is Verna Murphy. World War I saw the mobilizing of battalions from across Saskatchewan. Young Saskatoon business and professional men and women were numbered among the officers who enlisted. This unidentified photo shows a young officer from the 105th Saskatoon Fusiliers as he bids farewell to his young family. Other men in uniform stand with their backs to the camera. A woman is visible at the right of the image. Men on the train hang their heads out of the windows. This is probably at the South Saskatoon Grand Trunk Pacific Rail Yard at the end of Clarence Avenue. A poignant close-up of the father and young daughter seen in the previous image. During the period of the Great War, railway stations were the scene of many such cheerful farewells or joyous reunions. The scene is the departure of the 105th Fusiliers en route to join the second contingent of the Canadian Expeditionary Forces. Pulling his sleigh and toy shovel along a wintry Saskatoon street, this warmly dressed tot is set for play. The child is Edwin Murphy, stopped in front of 514 Queen Street in about 1918. Wearing a toque to keep his ears warm, this youngster strolls down Duke Street. Behind him is Sunnyside Terrace, one of the few examples of terrace housing in Saskatoon. Now covered in stucco, the original structure was built in 1912 with brick from the Saskatoon Brick and Supply Company. Duke Street, in the then sparsely settled City Park area, is the setting for this photograph of a small boy seated on a toy wagon. The wagon is located on a grassy boulevard on Duke Street. A vintage auto is partly visible at the curb. This photograph was likely taken after 1914. Two playmates join the youngster in his wagon. The beribboned beauty on the right is the ever-lovely Leonora. Leonora had the distinction of winning second prize in the Beautiful Baby competition at the 1909 exhibition. The riders on this wonderfully dappled rocking horse are Kent Murphy above and Edwin Murphy below in about 1921. Verna and Edwin Murphy share a laugh on a bench in what is now Kinsman Park. In the distance we see the railroad bridge and at the far right the President's residence. 
At the time this photograph was taken, in about 1920, wild crocus and other prairie flora could be found growing here. Being land-bound had not prevented local residents from enjoying sailing. Even before the founding of the Saskatoon Boat Club, there was sailing on nearby lakes. This nautical trio was shown on Redbury Lake in 1916 or 1917. Charles Murphy appears to be sailing the vessel. The women are wearing long skirts, and all three wear hats. In 1914, the city of Saskatoon provided a boomed swimming area in the river near the present Riversdale swimming pool. It was used until the summer of 1923. Saskatonians seeking relief from the summer heat would frolic in the cold, murky waters of the South Saskatchewan. Visible on the opposite bank are houses on Saskatchewan Crescent West. A water slide seems to have been one of the amenities at the bathing beach on the river bank. Swimmers avoided slivers from the wooden slide by going down on a makeshift surfboard or sled. Although the floating log boom was meant to keep swimmers out of deeper waters, frequent drownings testified to the treachery of the South Saskatchewan. Take fine river sand, add plenty of water, and you have mud. To this recipe add several small boys and the mucky result is captured in this exuberant Schrader photograph. There were no showers at the time on the river bank, so another dip in the river was needed to wash away the muddy mess. It's sports day and these Nutana Collegiate students, dressed in suits and hats, Middies and the bloomers most work girls wore for sports test their strength in a tug of war. Fairgoers at Saskatoon Exhibition Midway in about 1912 from bird's eye level. Many souvenir and refreshment booths are visible, a train on the tracks in the background. In 1909, the exhibition moved from City Park to its present site. During the previous three years, the Saskatchewan Agricultural Association held its exhibitions in September. Later exhibitions shifted to summer dates. The Ferris wheel was always a midway favorite. In this photograph taken after 1913, Fairgoers enjoy a spin on the Ferris wheel while others stroll the exhibition grounds. The grandstand visible in the rear served until it was replaced by a cement structure in 1928. Lawn bowling has been a popular spot in Saskatoon since its beginnings around 1916. In addition to the Saskatoon Lawn Bowling Club, Clubs in areas such as Mayfair soon sprang up. A 1929 newspaper report mentions that Westside Bowlers had decided to form a bowling green in Victoria Park, to be known as the Victoria Park Lawn Bowling Club. This photograph shows this bowling green. The outdoor lighting would have allowed evening bowling. Drummers in a military parade and men in Scottish uniforms marching past a residential area. Children and adults walk alongside tall two-story houses in the background. Men are wearing kilts and busbies. This is probably a photograph of the Saskatoon Fusiliers. They existed in 1913, 1914 and were disbanded in 1915. The location may be 25th Street because of the streetcar tracks. A crowd watches an armed forces ceremony in front of 3rd Avenue Methodist Church. On the left is a regimental band in an army battalion, possibly the 105th Regimental Fusiliers. The YWCA and houses on 3rd Avenue and the web block are visible.
two men beside an automobile near a sign stating, The Country Club of Saskatoon for the Use of Members. The Saskatoon Country Club started in November 1912 on Riverbank land several miles south of the city. The name was changed to Riverside Country Club about 1918. The club is still in its original location. Two women of fashion on the riverbank. Both women are wearing suits. One wears a close-fitting hat. The other has one with a wide brim. Fur neck pieces, muffs, laced boots, and fabric handbags complete their ensembles. Nutanet Collegiate and the Traffic Bridge are in the background. A close-up view of the women of fashion on the riverbank. A crowd watches a skier as he jumps at the ski jump on the riverbank. The first jump was built by the Saskatoon Ski Club during the summer of 1929 at the location known as Devil's Dip near the University. After an accident curtailed the use of the jump, a new one was built a mile north of Devil's Dip. Built of salvaged materials, from the first it dominated the landscape on the riverbank until 1978. We hope you have enjoyed this virtual recreation of Saskatoon through the lens of Helen Schrader. The original gallery show was held in February 1992, curated by Ron Jeremko with the assistance of local history staff. Helen Schrader would probably be surprised to see her photographs displayed in the gallery setting. Although her obituary mentions Mrs. Schrader's involvement in church, patriotic, and educational organizations, her photography is not included among her achievements. She herself would have chosen to be remembered for her literary contributions. An active member of the Writers' Club, many of her poems were published in various American journals. She collected some of these poems together and published them in booklet form about 1910. It is, however, as a photographer that this extraordinarily creative woman is honored in this exhibition. As a woman and mother, Helen Schrader brought to her photography an element of emotion and creativity lacking in other photography of the time. It is this quality which compensates for any lack of technical quality in her photographs, and which is perhaps Helen Schrader's greatest legacy.